Next question is from Turtle Wave. How long did it take you to fall in love with the journey, not the destination? That's a good question. Um, when you love the journey, you're going to go hit the destination and surpass it. So this is always a goal. This was a goal for me for my clients all the time. My goal was to get my clients to love the environment of going to the gym, to love the experience, to love exercise, to love the process of exercise. Um, because I knew if I could get them to do that, that they would never stop, that it was always something that they look forward to, that they knew that it made them feel good in the moment. They enjoyed that whole thing. I wouldn't have to worry about them ever stopping. That's, that was always uh, the goal. Now, be, me personally, that really happened to me and solidified for me. I mean, I always loved working out uh, from day one, but it really solidified uh, for me years ago when uh, I had somebody very close to me get very, very sick. And um, they were terminal. It took them they, for about a year and a half. They were terminal before they passed away. And I continued to exercise, and I started to fall in love with exercise for different reasons than I had loved it before. It wasn't about the pump or the sweat or the weight that I was lifting or how strong I felt or, or the intensity of the workout. You know that I, those are all things I loved before. It was the meditation uh, aspect of it. It was the feeling good. It was the present, the being present moment uh, uh, aspect of exercise. Like when I'm working out, I'm here. My mind isn't spinning in uh, a million different directions. And so I, in that year and a half period, I started to really fall in love with the journey in a more complete way, at least when it came to exercise. Now, here's the cool thing about this. Hmm. And I've seen this with young clients it bleeds over into everything else. It really does. Like you start to learn that the journey is uh, what it's all about, whether it's business or you know raising your kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you can enjoy the process, um, everything else is easy. Yeah, I think for me, um, I always loved working out, and I I loved self improvement, and I was sort of a junkie towards that. I always wanted to do better in any, especially ath athletic realm. I wanted to be better. I wanted to move faster. I wanted to get stronger. Um, so I always enjoyed that. But it, I think it really just dawned on me, um, you know, where you could go with with this fitness, like where I could take it uh, to new levels, was when I stopped being an athlete and when I just finally accepted the fact that like I don't have to work out to produce something, uh, uh, you know, like that, that I, that I measure out on the field. Like it's not, that's not all it equates to. Like there's, there's more to this. Like there's, there, there's ways of benefiting your body from, uh, you know, a physical standpoint, but also, you know, a mental, emotional standpoint too, uh, where this was something that, uh, it just turned into, uh, I'm, I'm doing this to, to benefit my body and to make me feel good and be healthy. Like I didn't, I wasn't in it to be healthy. I was in it for performance, like exclusively. Uh, and so once I moved back here from Chicago, uh, I, I struggled with that. And that, that, that was a thing. Like, I, what, what, what am I doing? Why even work out? You know, because I, I worked out to then go play something and then, mm -hmm. you know, display whatever skills or things I've been working on, or if I was stronger, more explosive, like that mattered. Uh, and now like it, it, it just didn't translate the same. So I just started to have to, uh, reframe it and, and, and look at it in a completely different lens. And then it just finally, I, I just accepted it and it became, uh, something that I just, I fell more in love with it because it, be, it was really benefiting me and everything just, uh, with my lifestyle. I don't think I, I arrived here until not that long, right before Mind Pump. Um, for me, you know, I was very uh, on or off all the time. And when I was on, I had a goal. I was I was had something coming up, and so I was going to get myself into shape. Even this is years of being a trainer, uh, and I, I use my trainer knowledge and experience uh, to whip myself into shape or to accomplish fitness goals that I had. I don't think it was until I, I fell out of shape um, and I left fitness for that, that little two-year hiatus when I was in, in marijuana. And when I was doing that, uh, and I realized how unhappy I was. I was, you know, I chased the dollar thing and I was off, obviously, my fitness. I was still kind of working out. I've never not worked out for a longer period of time than a few months, right? I think probably two months has been the longest I've ever not worked out at all. But I was very inconsistent. Uh, I was eating terribly. I wasn't moving at all. 
and I was kind of working out while I was doing the marijuana thing. And, you know, I'd reached that financial goal and I saw just my whole life was kind of in disarray. Like it just, my relationships with my family, my friends, uh, you know, the, my relationship with money, everything was kind of all changing around that time. And when I dip back into fitness and exercise and w- like full time, the attitude was different. It wasn't like I'm, I'm doing this because I have this major goal. Although I did use the transformation goal thing to kind of catapult Instagram and things like that. It really wasn't the main motivation originally, right? Originally it was like, I miss fitness and I miss what, the way I feel and how it, it affects like your point, Sal, every part mm-hmm. of my life. And after I did the whole, and it didn't come completely full circle until I got to walk away from competing. Cause obviously, so my mindset was there right before mind pump. Then I decide I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to dive back in for those purposes because I see how much it enhances my entire life. But I go, okay, well, I'm also going to build a business around at the same time. So let's put this out on Instagram and YouTube and drive traffic to me. And then it wasn't until after being able to walk away from competing where I was on this very strict regimen of what I was doing, training and dieting. And so I, I think really just in the last you know, probably four years or so, do I feel this way? And it, the way it looks, uh, as far as what, how does it look different for me today than it does then, is what I've mentioned on podcasts many times. There's lots of times where, you know, a, a day of, of exercise may be, a, you know, Katrina and I go somewhere and do a two and a half hour hike somewhere, or I may just work on my squat, or I may just do mobility for a while, or I'm doing... I look at uh, it a lot different. It was always like goal based before. If I was in the gym lifting in my mid to late twenties, I was doing it to accomplish something. I was in pursuit of a lower body fat percentage. I was in pursuit of building more muscle or more strength. It always there was always an end goal in it. It wasn't like I'm doing this to enhance my life. Today it's a hundred percent that. Today it's. I want to feel better. I want to sleep better. I want to be stronger. I want to have energy. I want to be able to play with my son. I don't want my joints to hurt. And so therefore, every day I'm trying to do something uh, that's related to health and it just looks different. It doesn't look like a structured, you know, hit every body part workout. It doesn't look like that because sometimes it's not how it plans out for me. And I'm and, and I'm okay with that today where in the past I would write that off as, oh, I'm not going to train because I don't have time to do this or, you know, go for a hike. That's not really going to help me build more muscle. So I'm not going to do it. And so that's really come full circle for me in the, in the last probably five to six years, really. Yeah, I used to, with, with, with clients, we would have this conversation later on when I, when I realized that I, I wasn't doing a good job getting people to stay consistent. And the conversations I would have is I'd say, okay, um, what are your favorite things to do that involve movement and activity? And they'd say, oh, I, I like dancing. Like, that's your cardio. So um, can you dance uh, twice a week? You know, or can you can you dance a little bit every single day? And they'd be like, "Are you serious? Shouldn't I be running?" Like, no, no, no. Do that. You enjoy it. I know you're going to do it because you love doing it. Um, the structured workout will be with me. Let me do the structured workout. And then I know my goal was, I'm going to make them love this. And 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 off, usually it wasn't the workout itself that they loved. It was the the way they felt and the environment and the people and they developed this good relationship. But yeah, this is. This is key, and it's funny how all of us are talking about how we we all worked out for years before this became a thing. Mm-hmm. This doesn't happen overnight. Well, uh, it's also it's a, it's a process. I also think that's I mean that when we had that very first talk on Mind Pump, this was the things that we felt were important to communicate to yeah. the masses that wasn't being talked about. Everything's about body fat percentage. Lose. You know, how do you get lean? You know, how do you gain five pounds? Uh, goals. Right, yeah. and uh, there was just I think a much more important conversation. We all do think there was a much more important conversation that needed to be had with the masses. Like you know, yes, we if we want to get down and break down macros and talk about you know planning out a plan for someone to to accomplish something, we've all proven that we can yeah. do that to ourselves and do that to other people. But when you talk about long-term behaviors and changing people's lives, that this becomes a part of their journey and not just a short right. goal for a wedding or Vegas mm-hmm. or something they have, that it, it sounds a lot different. And the, thing, the things you communicate are a lot different. And totally. it's a lot of the motivation behind what we it's do. It's a crucial part to uh, personal growth. You know, and that's uh, something that, uh, you know, it's very obvious when you're in it, but you got to be in it. Totally.